Hey guys, it's your freaking favorite medical channel, Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, we continue our bleeding and coagulation playlist. Previous videos, we have talked about hemophilia, factor 12 deficiency, and factor 13 deficiency. Today, it's vitamin K deficiency, so let's get started. Before we get started, let me answer the question from the previous video. What bleeding disorders, whether they are primary or secondary hemostasis problems, can have normal platelet count, normal bleeding time, normal PT, and even normal PTT? Answers, factor 13 deficiency, all these labs are normal, yet the patient has severe bleeding. I know it's weird. It's not actually that weird if you understand what you're talking about because factor 13 happens at the end of the coagulation cascade. So none of these tests will be able to pick it up. Other diseases include mild hemophilia and mild von Willebrand disease, and these will have mild bleeding. So before we start vitamin K, let's talk about vitamins. Why did we call them vitamins? Uh, vital amines. Oh, are they actually amines? No, it's a wrong name. A tale of three vitamins from history. These questions were answered in my biochemistry playlist. Vitamins are essential, which means your body cannot make them, therefore you have to eat them. Essential molecules are here. These are the functions of vitamins. As you know, they are cofactor for enzymes especially vitamin K. It's a cofactor for gamma glutamyl carboxylase in the gamma carboxylation in the liver for the prothrombin group activation, including factor 2, 7, 9, and 10, protein C, protein S, and protein Z. Vitamin K is a fat-soluble vitamin, therefore deficiency is less likely, but toxicity is more likely. It depends on an intact GI tract, an intact pancreas, and a robust gallbladder and biliary system. Malabsorption syndrome will lead to vitamin K deficiency because it's fat-soluble. Thank you. Balance is bueno. Too little vitamins, you get vitamin deficiency. Too much vitamins, you get hypervitaminosis. Both are bad. Source of vitamins, we have natural and we have artificial. Natural include diet, sunlight, and bacteria, which is the normal flora in your gut, and that's a big story with vitamin K. Artificial, such as the supplements. But how about my all-natural vitamin boost on my all-natural smoothie? First, these marketers are full of it for lying to you, and you are as naive as the B lymphocyte before it recognizes the antigen for believing them. It's a supplement. It's artificial. Oh, but it says no all natural on the bottle. Are you that lame? I can call myself Jesus. How do I know that I have vitamin deficiency? Measure the vitamins level in the blood and measure the level in the urine. There are two types of vitamin deficiency, primary or secondary primary. There is decreased intake, secondary the normal intake, but there is decreased absorption. When you eat, you either eat carbohydrates, proteins, or fat, or minerals. When you eat carbohydrates, you need to digest them into monosaccharides, proteins, into amino acids, and fat into glycerol and free fatty acids. Your pancreas is doozy. It's capable on its own by completing the digestion process from A to Z. Please don't be the doofus who is trying to remove my appendix because I have appendicitis and ends up removing my pancreas. I'll smack your gluteal region, metaphorically speaking. Also, don't be the doofus surgeon who cuts the splenorenal ligament without paying attention to the tail of the pancreas which is inside the ligament together with the splenic vessels. Stop it. Learn your art, learn your craft. Whether you eat carbohydrates, proteins, or lipids, they end up at acetyl-CoA, enter into the TCA cycle, boom, energy, thank you. Carbohydrates, proteins, or fat. Oh, medicosis, I feel that carbohydrates are bad for you, and therefore I do not eat carbohydrates, I just stick to salads. Oh yeah, but salads have fibers, and fibers are still carbohydrate. But I still feel that carbohydrates are bad for you. Like, feeling should not be part of the discussion. What hard evidence do you have? And is this true for you or is it true for everybody? Proteins, amino acids, fat. They have triglycerides, cholesterol, essential fatty acids, and even the lipid-soluble vitamins, vitamin K. So if I have problems absorbing my fat, I will have a problem absorbing my vitamin K, ending up with vitamin K deficiency and then bleeding. Let's talk about fat. We have lots of lipids in our body. We have triglycerides, cholesterol, essential fatty acid, and don't forget the fat-soluble vitamins. Let's talk about fat. Fatty acids and amino acids stimulate the eye cells in the upper part of the small intestine to secrete cholecystokinin pancreozymin. It's called cholecystokinin, cholecyst, gallbladder. Oh, I'll contract your gallbladder and increase bile. Thank you. Cholecystokinin, thank you. Pancreozymin, enzymes from the pancreas, pancreozymin. 
enzymin, lipase, colipase, cholesterolesterase, and phospholipase for lipids, amylase for carbohydrates, and protease for proteins. The pancreas can complete the process of digestion from A to Z. Steps of hemostasis, basic constructive blood block location, we know, we know this. Where is the problem in vitamin K deficiency? The problem is here because vitamin K is responsible for the gamma carboxylation of factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Protein C, protein S, protein Z. So where is the problem if I have vitamin K deficiency? If I have vitamin K deficiency, the problem will be in secondary hemostasis and therefore my PT will be prolonged and my PTT will be prolonged. Usually the prolongation of the PTINR is greater and more significant than the prolongation in the PTT because vitamin K deficiency will impact factor 7 before it impacts factor 2, 9, and 10. So the extrinsic pathway suffers first, and that's why the prolongation of PT is more significant. But in severe cases of vitamin K deficiency, all of them will be toast, and therefore PT and PTT will be equally prolonged. Do we care about primary hemostasis in vitamin K deficiency? No. So let's move on. Do we care about secondary hemostasis? Oh yeah. Affecting factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, and factor 10. And that's why the PT is prolonged, the PTT is prolonged, and even the TT is prolonged. We have talked about all of these diseases before. Today, it's vitamin K deficiency. Is this superficial bleeding or deep? It's deep bleeding. You get hemarthrosis, muscle hematoma, splinter hemorrhage, brain hemorrhage, later bleeding, bleeding after tooth extraction, bleeding after surgery, bleeding after circumcision, etc. These are the symptoms of vitamin K deficiency. You can add splinter hemorrhage here. Sources of vitamin K, natural and artificial. Natural, we have food, green vegetables, and the bacteria of your gut, the flora. Artificial supplements, we have intramuscular injection, we have pills, and we have subcutaneous vitamin K as well. What are the causes of vitamin K deficiency? To understand a pathology, let's start with the physiology. Hey, you ate green leafy vegetables and made your mama happy. And you have some nice doozy bacteria, flora in your gut, which makes your papa happy. And then you have a great liver and a robust biliary system and a marvelous pancreas a magnificent small bowel to absorb the vitamin K. And then the vitamin K will go back to the liver to help with the gamma carboxylation process through the doozy enzyme gamma glutamyl carboxylase. Gamma carboxylation of what? Of the prothrombin group, factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, and protein C, protein S, protein Z. Now you know the physiology, let's talk about the pathology. Let's interfere with the absorption of the green leafy vegetables or of vitamin K. Oh, high dose of vitamin A or vitamin E will interfere with vitamin K. Thank you so much. Sterility of the gut. Oh, like with antibiotics. Oh, yep. Fat malabsorption. If I have mal if I have problem here in the biliary system or a problem here in the pancreas or a problem here in my small bowel, of course, I will have malabsorption of fat and the fat-soluble vitamins, including vitamin K. If I have liver disease, gamma carboxylation is history. If I'm taking warfarin, gamma carboxylation is toast. Now, I love learning. Tell me more. Sterility. Antibiotics, like all of them now, they have to be long-term. Broad-spectrum antibiotics, especially cephalosporin, especially second and third generations. Antibiotics for a long-term will destroy your bacteria, and therefore there is no vitamin K. Fat malabsorption. The problem could be in your biliary system. The problem could be in your pancreas. The problem could be in your small bowel. Let's start with the biliary system. Biliary atresia, primary biliary cholangitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, familial intrahepatic cholesis. Who named these things? Cystic fibrosis. Why do we call cystic fibrosis? Yeah, because we have cysts in the lung and fibrosis in the lung. Oh, shut up. Cystic fibrosis is an obstructive lung disease. It's not restrictive. There is no fibrosis in the lung. How about cysts in the lung? There is no cysts in the lung. Uh, so why do we call it cystic fibrosis? Because we have fibrosis in the pancreas and cysts in the pancreas. That's why. Something your professor will never tell you because he's woke. If you have cysts and fibrosis in the pancreas, you will not be able to secrete pancreatic enzymes, will you? No. You'll have very thick secretions clogging the ducts of the pancreas. Oh, yeah. Do you think you'll be able to absorb fat or fat-soluble vitamins? Oh, no. How about bowel problems, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, short bowel syndrome, especially if you have resected the terminal ileum, because the terminal ileum is big on the bile salt pool. And bile salts are doozy if you want to absorb fat. No bile salt pool, no absorption of the fat and fat-soluble vitamins. Hashtag enterohepatic circulation. 
Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Speaking of second and third generation cephalosporins, you can get my antibiotics course on my website. Use the promo code antibiotics25 to get 25% discount. This is available for seven students only. We are having a pharmacology marathon on Facebook. Please come and join us. Let's talk about babies. Vitamin K deficient bleeding, historically known as hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Before this, it was known as the hemolytic disease of the newborn, but it's not hemolytic, it's hemorrhagic. And the better term is vitamin K deficient bleeding because like we know the cause now. Newborn babies have sterile guts. Oh yeah, because there's no bacteria. They came from their mother's womb clean. Contact with their environment, such as breast breastfeeding, mommy's breast is not clean. I'm sorry, mama, this is the truth. We have bacteria on our skin. That's normal, that's natural, and that's good to give your baby the normal bacteria flora. How dare you, doctor, say that my breasts are not clean? I take a shower three times a day, so you don't know what you're talking about. Actually, our skin is not clean, and that's a good thing to give your baby some bacteria flora. If your breasts were 100% clean, the baby would die of vitamin K deficiency and bleeding. Bottle fading. Oh yeah, of course there is bacteria everywhere. And we have three types of vitamin K deficient bleeding. We have early onset, classic, and late onset. Causes are many. Gut sterility, of course. Maternal medications, including anticonvulsants. Prolonged use of antibiotics. NICU infants. Parental refusal of vitamin K administration. Why would you do this? Oh, like it's because of the big pharmaceutical corporations trying to poison my kid. It's a vitamin. We're not giving your kid methotrexate. It's a vitamin. Wake up. But I don't blame you. I know it's your kid and you're afraid and you're emotional, but you need to do without your emotions for a second and think rationally. Again, I don't blame you. I have a friend who is a pediatrician and he has a new kid. And I asked him, you're a pediatrician. Does it change your perspective when you see those same conditions in your baby? He said, yeah, like the other day, my kid had viral exanthem. I know it was a viral exanthem and I should shut up and wait and it will go away. But for some reason, I believe that this rash was from meningococcemia or God forbid, a fat embolus. So I rushed into the hospital at 3 a.m. And then the pediatrician told me that it was a viral exanthem. This is what happens when you think by your emotions. Again, I don't blame you, but it's a freaking vitamin. Come on, exclusive breastfeeding. Oh yeah, because mommy's milk is awesome, but it's deficient of three things. F E D K. Please remember this word. F E iron D vitamin D and K vitamin K. Mommy's breast milk does not have iron, vitamin D or vitamin K in sufficient quantity. Severe diarrhea. Yeah, because your colon is like a nephron. If stuff is moving very fast, I have no time for absorption. Therefore, vitamin K will be lost in the stool excessive antibiotics use and they did a study in Egypt in infants who received vitamin K they still had vitamin K deficiency because of diarrhea exclusive breastfeeding oh yeah because my baby I will feed him natural milk and no 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 those artificial formulas no these are from the devil my breast milk is from God I will only give him breastfeeding and then excessive antibiotics use you have to live in Egypt for a long time because before you realize this as a fact of life excessive of like early excess of antibiotics use. I have lived most of my life in Egypt and then I came to America. In Egypt, we have exclusive breastfeeding because the formula is bad. Diarrhea is very common. Excessive antibiotics use. For some reason, this is like, it's artificial, but it's good for some reason. And then in Western countries, some sophisticated parents will say, oh, these are from the big pharmaceutical companies. Big pharma's trying to poison my kid. No. Yet Sam Harris thinks that we now live in the age of reason. Ha <laughs> ha, funny. I mean, in the 1950s and 60s, there was a famous ad that in a few years, everyone will have his own flying car. 67 years later, we have people rushing into the store and hoarding a humongous amount of toilet paper for a virus that does not cause diarrhea most of the time. And the so-called experts have been wrong on many things. Oh yeah, the age of science and reason. Kiss my calcaneus. I'm joking. Vitamin K deficiency etiology, high dose of vitamin A or E, sterility, liver disease, fate, malabsorption, and warfarin. Epidemiology, adults or newborns, we have the hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Pathophase, deficiency of vitamin K, therefore deficiency of the gamma carboxylation of 2, 7, 9, and 10. Protein C, protein S, protein Z. Clinically bleeding, usually the deep bleeding. Bleed count is normal, bleeding time is normal because primary hemostasis is fine. PT is prolonged, PTT is prolonged, mostly PT. Like when it comes to vitamin K, PT is your king. 
similar to warfarin, PT, INR for warfarin and for vitamin K deficiency. How about PTT? In mild cases, it should be normal. In severe cases, it should be prolonged. But again, for vitamin K and for warfarin, monitor them using the PT INR. Levels of proteins induced in vitamin K absence or PIVKA2. This is the most sophisticated test to test for vitamin K deficiency. Or you can measure the vitamin K level indirectly by measuring the level of factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, protein C, protein S, and protein Z. They should be low. Treatment. If the patient lacks vitamin K, give the patient vitamin K. If it's an emergency, give fresh frozen plasma to replace factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Prevention of hemorrhagic disease of the newborn by giving vitamin K. Dear parents, please take the vitamin K. It's good for your kid. And by the way, if pharmaceutical companies want to sell you something, it's not going to be a freaking vitamin. This is so cheap. The things that have the most effect on your health are always cheap. Wash your hands. Very cheap, very efficient. Take the trash out. Very cheap, yet very efficient. Vitamins, for heaven's sakes. Very cheap, very efficient. Let's add vitamin K to this glorious list. What's gonna happen to bleed count? It's gonna be normal. How about bleeding time? Also normal. How about PT and PTT? Will be prolonged. But the prolongation in PT will be greater than the prolongation of PTT, at least in mild cases. Some pearls for the pros, I will leave you to read them. Very easy, yet very important. Question of the day, you have two patients, patient A and patient B. Both of them have vitamin K deficiency. Patient A has vitamin K deficiency due to aparenchymal liver disease. Patient B has vitamin K deficiency due to vitamin K malabsorption. The question is, how can you tell the difference as a hematologist or a lab scientist? Not a hepatologist or gastroenterologist. No, focus on hematology and tell me how can you distinguish between the two patients. The answer will be in the next video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course. Thanks for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.